Hey, I am a revision geek and I want you to come and join my revision geek world. Welcome to the Diaries of a Revision Geek. I cannot wait for you to watch these interviews. They are so super fun. I've got qualified accountants together talking about their revision journeys, the highs, the lows, the struggles, and all the things in between about how other people got their plaque up on the wall and how they got qualified. I've picked qualified accountants in my LinkedIn network on purpose to help and support you guys, to inspire and motivate you if you are on your accounting journey. Feel free to like and subscribe below for more. Just click on the icons and I will keep you up to date with the diaries of a revision geek. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to another Diaries of a Revision Geek. Very excited to introduce our guest today, our Revision Geek fan. Hi. Hello. Thank you for coming. Thank you for letting me interview you. Very Hello. Excited. It's brilliant. It's, we've finally got here. We've, we've spoken a, quite a few times about this, haven't we? We have, and I was just saying how like feel like fans, my friend. I've spoken, we've been we've been connected on LinkedIn for years and years, and now we're here yeah. live for you guys to inspire and motivate you through your revision journey, whatever your journey is, however however it looks. We just want you to finish what you started to get that plaque upon the wall. So, um, fan, what qualification have you qualified in? Um, my AAT, which it's been quite a while now, to be honest. I've just. A bit late, but I've done the where you're a full member now. So that's in process. It's not easy. <laughs> so, yeah, um, um, introduce yourself. Let the re If people don't know who you are, please feel free to introduce yourself. Yeah, I am Francesca. I am the co-founder of Future Cloud Accounting, which is a very informal practice that me and my business partner founded together three years ago, to be fair. Um, so it was a well, it's a fast growing company, which is brilliant. Um, we use all cloud technologies. We used all our experience working in uh, a bit more of an old fashioned type firm where that's where I finished my AAT and Charlotte did her studies there as well for her chartered. Um, so we are very different, but it works very opposite, but they attract. Cool, good. Well, I might, might have to get Charlotte on to do her Revision Geek journey as well. But yeah, yeah. I'd just like to hear about that one. Yeah. <laughs> OK, cool. Let's learn. I'd love to learn about your AAT. And like on, on most of the interviews, I don't know what your AAT journey is like. So feel free to talk that through and we'll go in depth with some of your highs and lows. Yeah, so I think it started back when I was so I'm 37. I think I was 25, 26 when I started my AAT. Got two, I had two small children at the time. Um, I think my son was two and my daughter was five so quite young when I started it I was actually working on reception at a dentist at the time um and then I realized I asked a lot of questions with business for businesses I asked a lot of questions about the office where I work so even though I was on reception I kept asking about invoices and how does the business run and how much money is it making and what do you have to do with them and invoices and she actually saw how keen I was and, and said, why don't we both go back to study um, and go to do our AAT? So she, the office manager wanted to do it and I did it with her. But I started my level two and she actually dropped out because she failed an exam. Now, I found level two dead easy. And I think anyone doing the AAT, I think you get more of a shock when you get into level four. Um, so I started my AAT, still worked there, but knew I wanted to work in practice. And I think it took me until getting to my near my level four that I got in my dream role in the practice. And I had to try twice to get in because I wanted the AAT, but I felt like you had to work in an accountancy firm just to give you that bit of experience with it. So it makes sense because it might not, make, when you're doing your studying, none of it kind of makes sense until you're out in the big world with it. Yeah, I remember, um, or I didn't do my AAT, I did my SEMA, but there was a few light bulb moments where I was like learning this theory. And then I finally, a few months later, put it into practice. I was like, oh, that's what it is. That's what the um, call is. I didn't realise. <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah, it was hard because then I worked 
I think I worked three, three or four days and then one day at college with two kids, single mom. And I remember many times I questioned why I was doing it because I thought, do I need to do this? I'm like, not getting paid to do this as such. But obviously I knew that it's just a good little back thing to have the, the um, certificate, should we call it, to prove that you can do it. And I think I think experience is bigger, but I do think it's nice to have a bit of a backup. And that's what I wanted so much. What motivated you to do that then? Obviously, um, you were self-funding it, I'm assuming. I was to start with until I, when I got the job at the firm, I was like, can you help pay towards my level four? But I funded a lot of that. To be honest, level two was funded by the dentist at the time. So I only had a small student loan to pay off and I have paid it off now. Um, but what motivated me was I uh, was just so keen to learn. And I felt like I, I was bright at school, but I didn't put myself forward as much as I could have done. And then I ended up having kids young. And I, I know I'm bright and I wanted to, I had something to prove. So I wanted to try a new skill and better myself for my kids. So I had no one else, so I don't have to rely on anybody else. But I didn't think it would get me as far as it has. But I visualized something, I visualized better myself which is a start in itself, isn't it? Yeah, and you're a determined lady. Anybody who knows you know you're, you're determined. <laughs> You'll finish whatever you start, right? Yeah, 100 million percent. Do you think your AAT journey contributed to that? 100 percent. Yeah, because it shows you've got discipline again. You know, at an older age as well, it shows that you've got discipline and dedication. And the, I got more confident with my abilities the more I passed and how it, like easy I found it if that makes sense for me but I didn't I couldn't do it without studying I had to work for it you can't just think oh I'll do it. some people are good at exams aren't they but I had to work harder at me level four but yeah. I enjoyed it maybe that is a bit of geek in me I did actually <laughs> enjoy studying yeah we are vision geeks let's be honest yeah <laughs> I do like write read up stuff and but I was so nervous before an exam literally <sighs> pressure Especially as an adult, I think it gets harder as you get older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the SEMA exams now um, are multiple choice. A lot of them are multiple choice, and I didn't do multiple choice. I did handwritten three-hour exams. So um, I know I would feel a level of exam nerves from multiple choice guys as well. So maybe I yeah. shouldn't, shouldn't admit that. Is it that one or is it that one? Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes you get to select all that apply. So you know. Oh. Who and then you question yourself, don't you? I don't know if I like multiple choice, but there was that in AAT anyway, to be honest. And they do a red herring that's almost similar to the actual answer. I love it. It's brilliant, but it's hard. So during your journey, um, did they, when you changed jobs and worked in an accounting practice, what success did that bring to your AAT? I think it just made things a little bit easier because you're actually doing the work and I could ask questions within the job role I did a lot of it, a lot of it on my own though and there was a few tears because <laughs> I just thought none of it makes sense to start with when you're in a practice it is very gobbledygook the way they taught you you know you've thrown a, you've thrown a set of accounts and you like reconcile this but doing that alongside my studies and they did actually let me have a couple of like in my break I would look into things as well they let me do bits like that and sometimes if there wasn't enough working at the at my job they would say oh, I'll just spend an hour or two looking at AAT stuff so it do, they do they were supportive definitely helps to be in the right environment the people that have done it they encourage you yeah for sure so and um, did you fail and the exams, did you pass first time? Pass first time. There was no, no way I was going to fail. That's, I, I didn't want to fail any. And I think I overworked them. So I did get quite dot marks. But yeah, there was there was no chance. That, but even if I did, though, it doesn't matter, does it? At the end of the day, it might give you the kick up the bum. I was going to say another word, but we'll say bum. <laughs> <laughs> It'll give you a kick up the bum to go, right, actually, you do need to sit, sit down and work at it. Because some people think, oh, I'll be all right on the day. But I overworked it because I really wanted to pass with no no failures. That's good. No, that's that's just part of your journey, right? Yeah, that that's part of why I didn't. I didn't take my studies further as well, but you, you can ask me that at some point. Okay, so... <laughs> 
Um, I'm intrigued on your study plan. Obviously, you had lots of things to balance, life things to balance. So did you use a revision plan? Did you have any, did you know what you were going to do on a daily or weekly basis? No, I'll be honest, I didn't. No, I just, I knew like when, because obviously I was a single parent, the kids went to the dad, so I, I, I'd do a Sunday studying. I remember it was my sister's 30th at the time and I had a, an exam on the Monday or Tuesday. So her night was a Saturday night. I was thinking, oh God, and I didn't drink. And I didn't tell her that I didn't because it'd be like, oh, have a drink. Have a, I, was, I was like, yeah, I'm drinking, it's fine. And I snuck off early to study on the Sunday because it's I think it was my last year as well as of it. So I knew it was pretty hard. And then it was my exam. I even remember I bought a hat my, my first house as well, halfway through level four. Um, and I had I moved in on the 31st of January after renovating it for a month. Moved in on the 31st of January and I had a, an exam, one of my last ones, because it was 7th of Feb, a week later. And I still, it was fine after it all. So I knew I had so much in me. So I, to be honest, if I did go on to do C, my chartered um, certified, I know I could do it because I put the effort in, but I knew it wasn't what I needed to do to get where I wanted to be. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, let's go deeper into that. Because obviously um, I am a coach for CMA and ACCA students specifically. I do coach yeah. level four AAT just because it's that extra step up um, of intent. Where was you when I needed you? I know. <laughs> so where was I when I needed me as well? I'm like, yeah, this is why I'm here now to yeah. support the revision phase because I did college. I did um, study in college at BPP and... Um, that was good the tutor was great but then for the revision phase like the practice I was left alone and panicked and cried and all, all the things yeah yeah. But yeah that's why I'm here now to help with yeah. the practice you know how it feels yeah oh, exactly yeah um so talk us through if you don't mind like yeah. obviously you had a choice um obviously you had an AAT choice as well but the next level up is ACCA yeah. ACA so yeah. what was your thought process around that did you know you you didn't want to do it or did you want to do it did you try what was that? I obviously knew I didn't want to do it so obviously I had the two kids and I put a lot of effort into the AT with running the household and full-time job near enough and I know I can do it so I remember the director calling me down and my son was poorly I don't know if you've seen it on LinkedIn and stuff but anyway a couple of years after qualifying for me, a team of was poorly, had lymph Hodgkin's lymphoma, and so, he's absolutely fine now. But long, I'm just going to go long story short. My direct, the director was impressed at how I handled the household when he went through that, and I still managed to work. And my son went to school, and we was really positive influence and whatnot. Um, I think he was impressed at how I can handle stuff, and he offered me, "Do you want to go on to do your chartered?" Because um, they'll support me in that. And, it, and I could have done it and then, I could have done it next year, but I kind of, I just knew the answer was no for me, because I had different, I probably knew I had different qualities that some accountants didn't have necessarily, so they would almost need that backup for them, and not necessarily, but I just felt for me, I wanted to do probably a different path, which I am doing, you know, I'm not signing off accounts. So for, for me, it was so right. It was ridiculous. And I did, I did have my mates. So I thought, should I have took him up on that? Yeah. You know, because it would have all been paid for, blah, blah, blah. But no, I'd have, gone a, I'd have gone a different path, I think. Did you look into it at all? Nope. Didn't even. But an eyelid again. <laughs> so that decision was me meant to be. Yeah. And I'm so happy the skill sets I bring. You d I don't need it. That's good. I'm glad yeah. you said that. Like, this is why I'm interviewing so many different people and stuff as well. Like, I am biased. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I think CMO and ACC qualification is a massive step up and a passport and a jump and the opportunities that maybe as a non business owner, yeah. I've gone from both yeah. journeys and stuff as well. But yeah, with the all the opportunities that we've got Matt, who it did his certified chart, ACCA. He's fantastic. The technical skill he has is second to none. And he's, you know, I am in awe of people that do it as well. 
but it still doesn't make you think, um, I know I can do it, but I know I'd have to put a lot of time into it because I not naturally, I, you know, I'm not one of them that just chuck an exam in front of me and I do it correct straight away, where some people can, can't they? Maybe that, um, was, maybe that was a reason. Maybe. Subconsciously, but you know. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of like doubt there for me. But I don't know. I don't know because I did my AAT pretty easily, to be fair. But I overworked it to get honestly. And it, it, they used to say to me, you only need 70%. I was like, no, I need to get nearly 100. <laughs> so I put so much effort in. So I think it maybe that scared me a little bit. Then, but look how it's worked out. So obviously it was meant to be. Yeah. So let me ask you a few questions that I'm asking everybody then. So yeah. when you started your AAT, what opportunities did you think would come from your career or your life? Before I started my AAT, so what, thinking about doing it? Yeah, before you even knew, obviously I'll ask you what did come, but before you knew about these things now, when you first started, when you know, when we 23, 24, 25. Yeah. I just suppose I thought this will get me to be an accountant. I want to be in a professional environment. I think I'd come from a very destructive relationships, very unsettled jobs, and I want a long-standing career in a professional environment because I know I've got that in me and I like I love businesses and I love like the professionalism of it all. And I wanted to know that I'm good enough for it. So I think that's what made me think. If I did my AAT and get in a firm that are very well standing in Newark where I live, it will just all come pull together. And looking back now, obviously hindsight's a wonderful thing, but what opportunities have come since you've been AAT qualified? You're qualified for a reason. I'm not gonna lie, I'm interviewing you because you're AAT qualified. So what yeah. opportunities have you had because of that? Just obviously getting the job in the in the uh, first place at the practice I was working in, and obviously starting up my own business. And being brave enough because it was me that was the Malvi one, Charlotte, saying my visuals and my journey and cloud accounting. And, and it was more about helping people and being a bit more customer care. You don't need an exam for that. That can pay, that pays dividends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the opportunities are, it gave me confidence to do tax returns, for example, because I've got that back in. You know, not... Not many clients ask, by the way, what you what's you know what experience you've got, what studies have you done. Maybe two have asked me in Charlotte in the whole three years, which is very interesting. Um, but it does it does give you that confidence that you can hold your own with a tax return, a set of accounts, um, bookkeeping, that returns. But I'm, so, am I right in thinking if you you can't be you can't do you can't run your business if you don't have your AAT license? No. Right. So I got my AAT license, which was a nightmare to get. If I'm not going to lie, AAT, it was a little bit hard. <laughs> they want they, it's harder than ACA. Surely I just feel something now. And I had to give submit, but that's really clever of AAT in a way because they're thorough. I suppose Ace, I don't know why they're so different though. Because I remember Charlotte saying, "Well, I didn't have to do all of that." I had to give them all thoughts. I mean, you wanted blood from a stone. No, I'm joking. But I did it and obviously got my AT license. I probably don't need it as such now, but I still, I've refreshed it the other day, funny enough. So I've had it three years, which is amazing achievement. It is amazing. Through the pain, the outcome is just amazing. When I think about it, I don't give myself enough credit because sometimes you think, oh, it's just the AT. Yeah. So what? It's a start. I mean, ignore the just words. I know. Stop it, guys. Well, I, I wanted it. to see your plaque up on behind you. You know, I want to find you. No, I want work. <laughs> I know. That's so old fashioned, though. Come on, no plaques. <laughs> Come on, yeah. Put the plaque up. <laughs> I'm a geek. I don't care. I worked hard for this. Like, this is one of really my good. life biggest achievements in my life is my SEMA plaque. Like, it took me Brilliant. six years. That's more management reporting, isn't it? For that management account, SEMA is, yeah. is known for. So practices don't necessarily go for SEMA qualified accountants, do they? Which is interesting. Yeah. But you'd fit in industry, amazing. And yeah. so do AET qualified. And that's why I chose SEMA because I didn't want to work for an accounting practice. And I've got the skills to be a manager, finance manager, finance leader, all of those yeah. skills. Yeah. You do learn those. Um, yeah. There's a whole pillar called the enterprise pillar. Yeah, in SEMA, that you learn those things. People might not realize that, but it's not all technical. Do I know how to 
complete a set of static accounts? Maybe not. Yeah. But I can yeah. do one of the things. Yeah. 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 I've always wanted to know how to complete a set of accounts. I want to know why they the balance sheet and the profit and the profit and loss I love you know knowing the ins and outs of that and for that you don't need your technicalities either you just need to know how a business runs and why do you think that I'm not sure I agree with you on that one though because we have a level of this standard that we've learned and appreciate and understand and it's just ingrained in us now yeah. that's why we think oh you don't need to know you can't just yeah. give an l to a random person off the street yeah and understand you can give any p l to a qualified accountant then they will understand I'm talking clients language and they only care about their profit and loss so for me that's where I'm going with it but I get what you're saying. Yeah, whereas I, my job full time at the moment is a finance manager and I'm the one going balance sheet, balance sheet, balance sheet, balance yeah, sheet, balance yeah. sheet. Because obviously you haven't got the balance sheet right. Your profit and loss necessarily isn't following suit. So I get what you're saying, but business owners don't care. And small business owners, I'm not saying they're small, tiny, but um, I see what your business, you know, your clients, um, they, their balance sheet isn't huge anyway yeah so yeah no and they're quite simple aren't they hopefully they don't, they don't care balance sheet. <laughs> yeah they just need to know they've got cash in the bank and the profits are looking good that is the main thing and that's what clients like to hear yeah oh good so going back to your um revision journey if i may um yeah. what would you say your highs and your lows were during that time if you can remember any highs obviously the passing and with flying colours. I like the fact as well, um, my tutor said to, used to put me in for the week before everybody else. So I'd be the first to do it, so then I can feed back. I actually like that. I put the pressure on myself. I like that pressure. I must love pressure. Um, so then I'd help the other students because I've done it. And you can imagine me, that's someone, something I do, stupid enough to go, I'll do it first. Really, really. I'm going to yeah. be busy, Jake. Yeah, I want to do it. Yeah, and then I'll tell you the feedback of what it's like, so you can all then pass. Do you know? But if I didn't pass, I'd have to another lot. Um, so I gave myself a week less studying, but I, I studied that well, that it was fine. Lows were the, just the build-up before it, because I put pressure on myself, and that heart rate nerve-wracking, that environment, just uncomfortable, isn't it? But you know, the nothing experience. grows in yeah nothing grows in comfort no what did you do would you say any tips or advice what you did not even advice really what did you do in that week or two before your exam to try and calm yourself down or did you not um little and often with studying which did calm me down because you don't want to overwork the night before just do one big lot job lot I think nice little steady amounts helped um can't really remember the night the, the week leading up or whatever I think it's just I'm quite an open person maybe talk to people around me don't keep it to yourself share that you you're worried you're allowed to be it's fine um I think I made a lot of jokes about it like oh I'm dead nervous will I do it and <laughs> yeah I shared it with the, I shared it with obviously I went in first as well and I just think I thrived off the pressure even though at the time it was nerve-wracking but you just got to do self, um, like reassure yourself, calm yourself, like say you're going to do it, you, you'll be okay. So all the positive things. Yeah. And I think I like, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth or assume anything, but maybe you don't remember the week before because you did so much work the months before, you know? Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, it was little and often, definitely the way I stood it. Yeah, no, no room for cramming around my world, guys. If you want to cram, then I'm not the coach for you, for sure. Ah, so you're not, you teach them not to cram? Yeah, four-week revision phase, four to six weeks. Oh, I'd say so, yeah. 30 days. The revision, like I was saying, studies learning one thing, revisions um, practice a separate thing. Like, give yourself small bite-sized slots of revision consistently. Maybe not every day. It doesn't have to be every day, but it's consistency creates confidence. It's one of my things. But 30 days so that you're not doing massive weird panic in the last week. Yeah. Or cramming, because it doesn't work. Sorry, it just doesn't. No. Especially for no. a visitor as well. So, yeah. Um, oh, no, I love that. I was on the right track then, back then. <laughs> Did you have any breaks in between or for holidays or any breaks or was it the continuous um, 
Oh yeah, there was some breaks in between, definitely, if I remember right, Lane, obviously you get your summer holidays off before you start again in September. Um, then you'd have an exam, then you've got like six weeks build up for the next exam. But you had to wait six weeks for your results, which was torture. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be waiting for results, just like heart racing and like, oh, please, please. But it's almost like I knew I'd done it anyway, because I, I don't see how I couldn't have done the, like the way I worked for it. Yeah. So um, was that you had structure, I guess, from your college and your... Yeah, they gave you a bit of structure, yeah. So I feel like that was a really strong base for you to yeah. know. Yeah, 100%. I think you could still do it from home if you really wanted to, though. You've just got to be your own motivation, haven't you, with that? That's the odd bit. I suppose you're going to college, though, you can meet people in the same situations, a bit of accountability. Um, but if you're doing it from home find someone to be accountable to yeah 100 million percent yeah but you'll get through a at level two and level, probably level three on your own but then it's yeah. a step to level four yeah it is a step up into it level four 100 percent. so yeah you need some help i think if you're doing it from home definitely and accountability for sure yeah it's good well, well done yeah. um question I'm asking everybody because I love this question I give a lot of revision tips every day on LinkedIn so what would be your number one revision tip for any qualifying accountants listening so I'd say little and often definitely and when you're thinking about oh it's a night out and I've got this on I've got that on just think about all the nights out you can have when it's done that's what I say to my, my daughter as well when she's doing the GCSE. She says, oh, I need some mates now. But I think I say, Law, you're going to see your mates for ages after. You're not going to get that time back and you'll kick yourself. Think you'll kick yourself if you just don't, just put the time in or go out, but get home early. <laughs> not a good tip or not. That's a good tip, yeah. But I mean, everybody works differently, isn't it? So you, um, but it's worth, you don't have to rush it. I never say rush it, but you've got you've committed a period of time in your life. You don't need to extend it by yeah. years and years just because you yeah. want to balance. Yeah. Maybe for some people, it isn't a balance. It's a full time AAT and then get it. Then you, the world's yours. Yeah, that's true. But I, I do rush everything. <laughs> I want everything yesterday. That's me all over. That's why I did the exam early because I wanted it out of the way. You know, because I mean, anxiousness is getting the better of me. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for letting me interview you. Found it's been really oh, fun. No, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. If Hope it helps. Oh no, it does for sure. If anyone wants to follow Fan, then where can they find you? They can follow me it's on LinkedIn. I'm Francesca, and I won't say my surname. She won't find me from that. <laughs> and Future Cloud, search Future Cloud Accounting. Future Cloud on. Instagram, Fran Bella 84 on Instagram, a personal one. I don't mind people looking on that. And um, yeah, Facebook and whatnot, and YouTube now. God. <laughs> Next YouTube star with, with the Revision Geek, obviously. But yeah. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me interview you, Fran. It's been really fun. Oh, you're welcome.